Hello, I'd like to talk about Psalm 25 today, when you feel ashamed. I'm just going to read the first uh, couple of verses. In you, O Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put, be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. So the definition of shame is uh, a feeling of uh, or painful or humiliating feeling uh, of uh, distress caused by the consciousness or of um, the understanding that we did wrong or we just had foolish behavior. Um, God does not want us to live in shame. And Sometimes that relates to just changing, uh, getting out of it, that is. It, it just relates to changing the foolish way that we live. Sometimes it relates to apologizing. Sometimes it uh, relates to recognizing that we can be forgiven. Uh, and if you look uh, through this psalm, if you read it, you, you'll find that all of these three things are found in it somewhere. And uh, so let, let me read a, a few more verses to, to show you that. Here's what it says. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. So, there are two sides to finding deliverance from shame. And the first is understanding that there can be freedom from sin. There can be freedom uh, from wrongdoing. And that is the forgiveness of God. That is the mercy of God. And in this psalm you find this repeated over and over uh, uh, again. That God's mercy is available and is present. That we can, um, we can receive provision from God for our wrongdoings and for our sins. So there is forgiveness. And that is the first part of it. <clears throat> the second part of that coin is that there is a requirement that comes... Uh, with forgiveness. There's a, a requirement that comes uh, with the freedom from sin, and that is um, uh, humility to accept the covenant of God. Uh, and so this idea of covenant is really, it's, a, it's an Old Testament term, but it relates uh, to the, a deal, uh, so to speak, that God makes with us. What, what is a covenant with God? In this context, it's about um, the teaching of the, the wisdom of God, listening to the wisdom of God, accepting the truth about what's right and what's uh, wrong. So, bottom line, shame is not of God. Shame makes us direct our focus inward and view our entire self in a negative light. Um, that there's somehow something intrinsically wrong with with me as a person and uh, if you look at what the Bible says about that you you'll have to say that uh, no this is not what the Bible uh, teaches and this is certainly not who God is about because you are God's creation you are created in his image and you are precious to him and so there's nothing intrinsically wrong about you uh, it's your actions and motivations uh, that you need God's help with. And uh, that speaks of something very different. That's talking about guilt. Now, feelings of guilt, in contrast, result from a concrete action for which we accept responsibility. So guilt causes us to focus our attention on the feelings of others. So, what about focusing on others today? Uh, even uh, focusing on the love of God for you. All of those things are way better uh, than shame. So focus on guilt and the things that we've done that need changing and asking forgiveness for and so on. And you'll find that it, uh, it just refocuses you, uh, refocuses you outside of yourself 
uh, into the feelings of others, including the feelings of God. Let me finish with these two verses, verses 16 and 17. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. I would say also free me from my shame, O Lord, uh, today. Relieve my heavy heart today. May uh, this uh, song be an encouragement to you today. Thanks a lot.